show you. This is what we're doing today. I originally painted this as a big painting. But today, we're going to do it on the very small canvas. And I know that some of you ordered the canvases. So you'll have these canvases. And they're quite cute. It's these little ones here that we're going to do. And that they come with their own easel. So they're quite cute. But we're having a problem with stock. So as soon as I've got the stock from the stockists again, I will let you know. All right. Let me start the painting. Here we go. You will need in your palette. That's actually green. It looks quite dark, but you need blue, green, white and black. It's a nice easy one this so I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. So first things first, take the large brush, the big background brush, and wet your brush. Dry it off on the cloth in front of you so it's not too wet. And we're going to mix, I'll hold this here, we're going to mix a pale blue. So I'm going to mix the pale blue, taking a little bit of the dark blue, mix it, in a spot here in my big uh, mixing section and take a little bit of white, not all of the white, and get myself a nice light blue. And when I'm happy with that light blue, I'm quite happy with that color. The canvas, you, do nev you never want to put your colors or your main item in the, or your horizon, um, in the main item in the painting across the middle or that way across the middle. You always want to keep it slightly to the side or slightly higher or slightly lower. So I'm going to put my horizon, this is my sky horizon, I'm gonna put it slightly higher than halfway and take it straight across the canvas, as straight across the canvas as you can get it. That light blue. So it's just slightly above halfway. And then I'm gonna fill the whole top of the canvas in with that light blue. And you can mix the colors on your canvas. What that does is it gives you some nice variations in sky color. Unless you really want a nice flat sky color, then mix a lot of the paint all at once. So if you look at my palette, I'm mixing little bits and I'm getting variations in that color because I'm mixing little bits as I paint. Cover the whole top section of the canvas and you can use nice long strokes to cover it as fast as possible. Now there's a bit of a shine on there but if I hold that up you can see I've got kind of streaks in my sky which I don't mind at all. I think it's quite nice. If I wanted to add a little bit of cloud now you can do it by taking a bit of white, put a bit of white, I didn't even wash the brush, I put it straight into the white, and I made some clouds using this round motion with my brush. There's a bit of strong white across the top of the cloud. And then a trick to blend it into the, the sky below is to take another dry brush, whichever dry brush that you can find. I'm going to use a um, dry brush that I have on hand beside me. I keep a whole pile of brushes with me. And then what I'm gonna do is just blend the bottom of that cloud in with a dry brush, like that. And I want you to see how that has turned out. If you can see that, without the shine on it. So I've just got a little bit of cloud in my picture. And some variation in the sky as well to show that there might be other cloud there. And when you're done with that, how's everyone going? Are you all there? Getting there? Right, when you're done with that, we're going to mix the sea color. So I'm gonna wash my brush off and dry it on the cloth in front of me. Make sure that I've got 
no color in that brush again. And the C color I'm going to mix is a mix of the blue and the green and the white. We've got a mix of pale blue and green here. So, I mean, pale blue and white here. So I'm gonna take some green and mix that into my pale blue mix. And I've got this gorgeous color coming on there. Doesn't have to be too dark. Oh, look at that beautiful color. So I'm gonna use that color now. And I want to paint approximately a half of this section of the canvas now. I don't want to use the bottom section. I'm going to paint that white, but approximately half. I'm going to color or paint that whole C in across underneath the horizon that I've just created. Make sure it's as straight as I can possibly get it. Although to be honest, it really doesn't matter if it's not. And then I'm going to fill in about a third of the canvas with that color. In fact, no, only about a quarter of the canvas with that color. Because what I want to do now is start introducing, as I'm going down, I want to start introducing some white into that. So I'm going to just load white. See, so yeah, that's my color. I'm just going to load some white onto my brush. And start painting across my C with white. So what you see is I'm getting a very nice variation of dark color coming to light color. Going across like so. Washing my brush off again when I've got that. So I've got that nice variation of color. You see without the shine there. And then I'm gonna wash my brush off, dry it off, and only load white on that brush. And the whole of the bottom of the canvas now, going slightly over the edge of my C, I'm going to paint the whole of the bottom of the canvas in plain white. If you get a little bit of your turquoise color on it, just wash your brush off, load it up with white and paint again, like that. So I've got white all the way across the bottom of my canvas now. So you should have that nice variation where you've got some sky, sea going fading to white and then white beach in the front. This is my ideal beach, let me tell you, because we don't have that here, okay? We've got brown sea and windy sea at the moment. So many waves. Right, when you've done that, you've, when you've uh, completed that, I'm going to use the same brush, load a little bit of that turquoise color back onto the brush. So I've washed it off and dried it. I'm going to load a little bit more of that turquoise color back on the brush. Now, what I want to do is make a little bit of a sand bank and put a puddle of water in front here, which my birds are going to be sitting in. So with that turquoise color, I've turned my brush sideways. Let me just put a little bit of a puddle in this white section here. So it's halfway down the white section. A little bit more. So I've got a puddle of water that's in the front here. And I'm going to take my puddle of water slightly off to the right like that. So it looks like the sea is just on its way out, but it's leaving a little bit of a puddle in the front. I put a little bit more green on that brush. I'm going to take it off across there. So it makes it look like it's just a little bit, the bank has come down a little bit. I've got a little bit of a shadow there. What you can do 
do you want me to have a look at your pictures anybody if you do hold them up let's have a look and see does there anything that you need to ask are you happy with where we're going if you are let's carry on I'm blending a little bit more of my water in at the back here of this particular sand bank that I've created here so it looks like the water's shining on the top of that sand bank right wash that brush off brush care is very important so please keep your brushes clean after you've used them and uh, I've put mine into the um, into the water for now awesome right now it's uh, time to add a little bit of uh, foam to the water so to do that and a little bit more detail in the water at the back here to do that I'm going to use this nice big fat round brush once again wet that brush dry it off so it's just slightly damp I'm going to load that brush with some white there we go load that brush with some white now on my painting I want some foam across the very front here to make it look like the waves are rolling in all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this round brush and I'm going to wiggle some white in this section just as the the waves just as the color changes from uh, turquoise to white I'm going to turn it sideways and just wiggle some white in there like that and you think it's not you see there's a bit of a shine there that's going to be the waves a few more on this side here wiggle that in there so my waves aren't a line they're a little bit more um, they look like they're a bit more in motion slightly higher slightly lower so it's not a straight line across so there's my waves and there's a little bit of turquoise in front of them not a lot so it shows that the beach is slightly wet in front of that wave. Now I'm going to put a few more little lines of waves in the background here. And you can see it's not 100% straight and I've got a few lumps. Because that's actually how waves look. A few more going across the back here. Just a few more, just some smaller ones. As they go further away towards the horizon, they're going to get a little bit smaller. So they just start being highlights going towards the horizon. Because they're getting further away, they're going to be smaller. So I don't know if you can see what that looks like. From there, just a few little waves. See, those are little tiny dots at the back here, just to show there's some highlight on the water at the back. And in the front, slightly longer. And in the very front, I've got a long wave and a long wave here. We're going to go onto the very smallest brush, which is this brush for me, the small round brush. This is my detail brush. And with the detail brush, we're going to put in some. I'm going to put in our birds. Now our birds, because this is a, a pastel color picture, the birds are going to be a gray, not a black. So I've got black here. I'm going to load, put a little bit of white actually in the black and add some black to that. So I've got a gray, kind of a dark gray, rather than 100% black. Once you've done that, the first bird is actually a two. It's in the shape of a two. So take that brush and I want this bird to be wading in the water. So I'm going to put its body slightly in the water down here. So to do that, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a neck, come down like that and put its body in. Can you see that? So it's a little bit of a two, like a backward S. And then for the body, I'm just going to make it round, come round a little bit at the top there. So it looks a little bit like a cormorant. Can you see? 
So it's a backward S and then add some more body in across the top of the bottom of the stroke of the S. I'm also going to add more face in, some more head in. So at the top stroke of that S, I'm just going to round that off a little bit there to give him a head on his neck. I'm going to give a little bit of a beak, which is a straight line into the middle of his head like that with this thin brush, not changing. So if you have a look and see what that looks like from there. So I'm not changing the color. I've just given it a little bit of a beak, a thin line there. And because he's in the water, I'm going to add two legs, just little legs that are in the water underneath like that. He's wading. So it should look a lot like that. Okay. The second bird, same color is actually an S, but this bird's got its neck stretched. So what I'm gonna do here is, and he's slightly above the water, so I'm going to put his head like so, neck and body. He's above the water. So it's an S. I'm gonna add some more uh, what I say, meat to that body, which is on the bottom part of the, the S. So I'm adding to the top of that and I'm adding underneath. So I've added more meat to that body. And then I'm going to add some more to the head to make it the same size as the head of the other bird. Let's make that neck a little bit thicker. Make the same size head as the other bird. So they're relatively the same size. And once again, put a little beak on there. Straight line coming out of the front of his head. So there's my two birds, quite simple. And this bird has got longer legs. He's a little bit further up in the water. So I'm going to take from the middle of his body with the thin brush, I'm going to give him two longer legs. He's still waiting. And the legs are quite tight together. They're not too far apart from each other. And he's got longer legs and they go into the water. Those are my two birds, my cormorants. But what we do need to do is put some reflection of those birds in the water in front. So if you take a little bit of the darker blue color, we mixed a slightly darker blue color. I'm going to take that, add a little bit more blue to it. So I'm using that turquoise mix that we originally created. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to that. And with that, I'm going to put some reflection in this water. Now reflection, this water, they're wading. So the water's, it looks a little bit um, disturbed. So the reflection, I'm taking from the legs and I'm gonna put a few little dots like that coming off the legs. My reflection is going a little bit off to the left side of this bird. And then I'm going to put quite a few dots like that to show that that bird's body is now in the reflection there, not going over the beach, like so. And exactly the same, using that the exactly the same um, angle that I've done for that bird, the shading of that bird, I'm going to do for the bird next door to it. So it's a few little dots coming from its legs. And then this bird has also got a bit of a dark shadow there. Reflection of those birds in the water. And it's only going up to the edge of where I've, I've made my beach. Okay, let's carry on. Once you've done the shading, 
or the shadow of the birds in there. Now you need to put a few highlights back into that water. That water is rippling. So with the smallest brush, I'm going to load, wash that brush off and load white only on that brush and add a few little white ripples in this water that we've created here in the front and across, even across our shadow. Uh, our shadow there. I'm going to put a, little, a few little white ripples with that that brush. I covered up a few of my a little bit too much of my shadow, my bird shadow. So I'm just going to put that back in there, like that. There we go. Okay. With that, now we've got some seagulls to put into here, into the picture. Now my seagulls are gonna be in white. So if you have your brush already loaded, your uh, small brush loaded already with white, that's what I'm gonna do my seagulls in. Are we all then ready to put in seagulls? Birds, when you're painting birds, the only thing to remember about painting birds that are far away is that each wing, when they're flying, each wing is at exactly the same angle. So if you're going to do a wing, now I'm going to do one here, a wing of a bird that looks like that, I have to do exactly the same and equal for its second wing to make my bird. And because I can see this bird quite clearly, I'm going to just put a little bit of a blob underneath those wings, in the middle of those wings, to give it a bit of a body. Can you see? Just a little bit of blob in the middle of those wings to give it a body. If I paint my next bird, and I'm not going to paint it the same, because all the birds are flying at different, at, uh, uh, they're at different altitudes, they're further, further away, closer together, so I can make a slightly smaller bird, but he's got wings that are slightly higher. So his wing is slightly down. I'm gonna make his other wing going exactly the same angle up. And once again, a little blob underneath those two wings in the middle where they meet for a body. Now it's up to you how many birds you put in yours. Um, if I'm presuming that there's fish here, which is why these birds are in the water, I'm going to put some more birds flying over the water like that, a little bit closer perhaps to my birds, to my wading birds. And maybe a few more, coming a little bit closer even. So one there, one there, with the body here. One across the top here again. He's a little further away. And his body's facing a different angle. So it looks like that. Close up, you can see that. And I'm going to add a few more, maybe one more over here. And maybe one over here. And one above him. And next one has got its wings going slightly down, like that. Wings don't all have to go up. So I've got the wings going slightly down. I've caught him at that angle. And I don't think there's anything else I want to add to this picture at the moment. What I could do, because if you have something that's too white on the left-hand side here, you can take your small brush, medium-sized brush. I'm going to use a very pale turquoise from this turquoise mix that I've got here. 
And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few lines across here just to take up some of that white space that I've got in the front. I don't really need all of that. Maybe a few here as well. Just a few light turquoise lines. You can hardly see them there. Can you see them? There they are. So they just break up that white a little bit. And basically that's my picture. So all you have to do from there is sign it. Which I think I'm going to do in my grey, paler grey than I've already than I've used for my cormorants, and I'm going to sign it right here. There we go.